What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to something completely different. We are going to be talking about this week in Pokemon. This week, we got a lot. A lot happened this week in Pokemon, and I wanted to just go ahead and put it all into one big video for you. And so, down in the description below, there will be timestamps to each different thing that we are going to be talking about. So that way, you can go ahead and skip to the part that you want to hear, or you can just stay right here and watch this beginning part. So, we're going to be starting with tier shifts, just because those happened at the beginning of the week. And then we are going to shift over to the trailer that we got, the big announcements and all of that good stuff. And then we're going to go over to the website and look at all of the information that we got concerning some more specifics having to do with some of the stuff coming in the DLC. So I hope you guys are excited. Let's go ahead and jump into it. But before we get into it, make sure you leave a like on the video and make sure to subscribe if you are new. Today is the last day of our little deadline that we've set on the channel in getting to 100 subscribers in order to have our Pokemon waifu tier list. So if that's something you want to see on the channel, make sure to subscribe. We are so close at time of recording. We are eight away. And so if we can just get eight more subscribers by midnight tonight, we'll have it. And that video will be up very soon. So make sure to subscribe if you're new, make sure to like the video and make sure to comment down below, letting me know what your thoughts are on the upcoming DLC. So let's go ahead and jump into it. The first thing on the docket today is going to be tier shifts. Now we got our tier shifts on the first of the month, like we always do. And normally I would put out a video doing our, you know, state of the meta address, that sort of thing. This week, I thought that with everything going on, I felt like it would be good to just do everything in one video so that you can get a bunch of information at once. So let's go ahead and look at our tier shifts. Just briefly, we're gonna look at it. So we've got Pre-Marina and Alolan Ninetales moving back up to OU out of UUBL. That sort of makes sense to me. Pre-Marina is a very good Mon being so bulky. It hits decently hard, Calm Mind and Recovery and Draining Kiss. Those are both great. Then we've got Alola Nine Tails with it having the hail. It's just fantastic. It's the best hail setter we've got in competitive right now. So if you want to run hail, you got to run that. Next is Shuckle moving from PU to OU. And this, this is just nuts. Sh Shuckle is just ridiculous. And it's just one of those mods that is, it's kind of like ditto in my opinion, where it'll go from zero to amazing just overnight. And then it'll just go back to zero. It, it's so weird, but so yeah, it went from PU to OU overnight, which is ridiculous and hilarious and I love it. But yeah, we're seeing quite a bit of usage of it. It's a great hazard setter and that's its real way to shine. You know, you throw a mental herb on it to prevent the taunt and you get up either webs or rocks. It's it's just a great mon. And next, let's talk about a couple of drops. We've got Keldeo and Pelipper moving down to UU. This is just going to make UU a huge weather battle. So we've got Sun down there with Torkoal and Venusaur just, I don't believe Venusaur is allowed down there anymore, but we still got Darmanitan. And so Sun teams are down there. Now we're going to have Rain teams down there with Keldeo. It's going to be pretty insane looking at the UU tier. It's going to be a lot of weather battles. So I'm excited to see where that metagame goes. And the last thing that I wanted to cover in the video, really, I know that there's a lot more on this picture, but the last thing I wanted to talk about was Torkoal and Dugtrio. Now, Dugtrio is one that I called a long time ago that once Arena Trap gets banned, you're going to start seeing Dugtrio drop. And that is exactly what's happening. It doesn't have the ability to trap anymore, and it just kind of falls off the face of the earth. So, yeah, it was only really good to trap things in, and that was its real calling card. Now that it can't do that, Oh well, it's no, it's no good anymore. As for Torkoal, Torkoal is just starting to drop back down and I'm not really sure why. Um, I, I think it started initially dropping because Dracovish became even more and more prominent, especially as it became tested. And that is the last thing that I want to talk about is Dracovish. This past week, Dracovish was banned from OU, which is awesome to see, I think. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of torn on how OU is going right now because they're banning a lot of our wall breakers, right? So Melmetal and Galarian Darmanitan got banned. Now we've got Dracovish getting banned, but none of our walls are actually getting banned. Clefable, 
Toxapex. All of these things that have really high usage are not getting banned. And so, I mean, come on, look at Clefable's usage. It's ridiculous right now. And so I really think that this should be suspect tested. I know that recently in an interview, the head of the OU council talked about his reasons for doing this, for testing the breakers rather than the walls and saying that it's going to shift the metagame too much. I don't know how much I'm down with that because I really think that it's just kind of an excuse to not do a suspect test. I, I don't know. I really feel like it should go ahead and be tested. I think that Clefable is just too prominent in the metagame. It's too centralizing, just like what they said with Dracovish, but that's just my opinion. All right, so the next thing that we are going to get into is a trailer breakdown. So this trailer was hype, I have to say. Now, I have already watched it. This is not a reaction video. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But I wanted to break down a couple of things that I saw in this that I thought were really interesting. And then we'll go into a little bit more detail looking at the website. So we're going to go ahead and press play on this. And all right, off the bat, this... I love this thing. I absolutely love Galarian Slowbro. It's just so friggin' cute. And I, I just love the design of the little guy on his arm. And it's it's cool. It's really cool. So I have I do have a theory about him, which we're gonna go into talking about him a lot more later. So we'll I'll, I'll do my theory then. We'll 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 focus on the trailer for now and then I'll talk more about him a little bit later. But yeah, so we see the dojo, we see this huge tree, and yeah, so just a generalization looking around. Luxray, we see Luxray again, which I am super excited about. I love Luxray. Such a good Pokemon. All right, so we start to look over this expansive range here, and there, Scyther. That means Scizor is coming back, which is Insane. I, I love Scizor. I think that it's fantastic that it's coming back. Uh, Tauros, eh. You know, I'm pretty sure Tauros is already in the game. But Scyther. I'm very excited about Scyther. Uh, Drudagon. Drudagon we have not seen in this game yet. Eh, you know, that's, that's my boy Crayola. He just looks like a little crayon that got, like, melted somewhere. And they just got, like, melted together. You know what I'm saying? But, I no. I, I'm not really a huge fan of him. Sandile, though, one of my top favorite Pokemon is Crocodile. So seeing this, I'm very excited about that. And then let's see, Eggy and Politoed. Eggy is very is good. Eggy is good. Politoed is fantastic. Politoed gives us another rain setter outside of Pelipper, and so I think we might start seeing Pelipper drop just a little bit more than what it is now and start seeing a rise in Politoed, especially in VGC. Now in singles, just in singles, we'll probably see a drop. The only reason that Pelipper would be run in VGC is because it could possibly Dynamax and give a max and both set rain again if it were to get knocked out or something, if like a Torque Call came in, or it can go for the, uh, the flying type move. But typically, you're going to see Politoed. Politoed is, is a fantastic rain setter with Drizzle. So, yeah, we're going to see that a lot. Uh, Waylord, Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan is a new boy coming back. Bufalant, Lycanroc, Emolga. All those are pretty cool. Mind Shao, Fletchender. Now, Fletchender and then, of course, Dragalge here. Fletchender is interesting because I'm wondering if they're going to change Gale Wings again. So if you if you guys remember in Gen 6, when Talonflame was first introduced, Gale Wings gave you priority on any flying type move, no matter what. And Talonflame was on almost every team. It was kind of ridiculous. So then they changed it to where last gen, if you're at max HP, if you haven't taken a hit yet or taken rocks damage or anything, then you still get the Gale Wings effect. So this generation, I'm wondering if they're gonna change it. Now, Talonflame now has heavy duty boots. So rocks don't just automatically mean that it's going to fail in that regard. And you have to consider if it comes in with rocks up, that's still priority defog and it doesn't take that rocks damage. So it's going to have priority defog, priority tailwind for doubles, which is good if it's at full health 
um, Priority Brave Bird, of course, and many other things. So Talonflame is going to be very strong with heavy duty boots, I would say. I'm, I'm very excited about that because that's what really held it back the most was entry hazards. Now it doesn't have to worry about them with boots. Talonflame is going to be a problem. I'm just saying. Dragalge is cool. And okay, slow poke right there. I don't know. If, I don't know if you saw it. Can we, can we back up a little bit? Slow. So those are slow pokes running. Slow pokes are apparently very fast in Galarian in Galarian form, which goes more to support my theory of Slowbro, which we'll get to. This thing is an abomination. I love Cramorant and I hate this. This just. Bleh. But I also think that this is going to be a fantastic addition to the game. Uh, I, whatever items this thing ends up spitting out, I think are gonna be huge, and I'm kind of excited about it. So yeah, we've got that, and so now we've got the Max Soup. Max Soup, I think, is going to be very important, in because my theory is, so as you can see, our player is sitting here with our rival, and then here's Mustard, so here's here's my, my assumption, right? I think that Max Soup is going to allow Pokemon that do not have the Gigantamax factor to gain the Gigantamax factor. Now, I don't know if it's going to just give you the, you know, it's not compatible with this Pokemon if it doesn't have a G-Max form, or if you could theoretically feed it to any Pokemon, but it just won't do anything. I don't know, but I feel like that's what this is going to do. It's going to allow a Pokemon that you catch in the wild, just a normal Pokemon, you give it the max soup and it gains the Gigantamax factor, which could be cool. That would allow you to breed Gigantamax Pokemon. And that's that's kind of where I'm thinking of it. So, you know, you and that's why they're kind of promoting all these raids right now is so you can get the Gigantamax Pokemon and that sort of thing but you can't breed them for IVs. You have to get them all the way up to level 100 and then use bottle caps on them. This way you could breed for a perfect one and then give it the soup and there you go. So I think that's what we're gonna have here and, and that's gonna be really nice. More mustard, more rival, Dynamaxing with the Slowbro, which is absolutely awesome. And then we're showing off the Venusaur and Blastoise, which is so cool. I love their max move animation. It's super nice. All right, so now we get to the dojo and meeting Cub Fu, which is fantastic. I love Cub Fu's design. He's so cute. And there we get Star You and Star Me. Now, Star Me is going to be very good now because Rapid Spin being buffed. That's going to be fantastic for Star Me. Not that Star Me was particularly slow to begin with, but I mean, it's gonna be pretty fast. I remember running several Scarf Starmie sets back in the day, and this will basically just, you get the spin off and then you basically have a Scarf on it. It can make, it's gonna make Starmie pretty strong, I would say. All right, Poliwag, or that was Poliwhirl rather, and then Scraggy, but that's already in the game. Evolving into Urshifu, which is also fantastic. We get Gigantamax Urshifus, both forms, which is amazing. And we'll talk about them later as well. And now we get Crown Tundra. Now, I did not expect to get this much Crown Tundra stuff. We get Calyrex. I, I did not expect to get this much information about the second DLC. That kind of blew my mind. I, I thought it was just gonna be Isle of Armor stuff. So now we get a new character, which we'll talk about him a little bit later as well. We get the Reggie Dens, which is awesome. So Reggie Rock, Reg Ice, and Reggie Steel coming back. Relicanth, which is how you obtain them. And wait, wait, right, right there. This. So Relicanth is very important to getting the Reggies in the original games. And so that is awesome that they're bringing back that Easter egg. But this, this frame right here is a lot more important than what I think some people are, are thinking because I've been hearing some rumors that people think that we're gonna be dealing with time travel. And I guess it's because Celebi is the time travel Pokemon and it's dealing with the first, there's a shiny one coming with this first DLC. But then Calyrex is also the same type and it's like the ruler of Galar or something like that. And so I've seen some people citing that because there is the shriveled up tree and there is this berry tree that they are supposed to be the same tree and it's just at different times. I think they missed this frame where it shows both trees on the same frame 
it's not uh, at least if that's your proof of time travel then there's no time travel maybe there is time travel but it's not because of the trees we get Absol, we get Cryogonal, we get uh, Swablu, which is really cool. Um, Vanillish hanging out back there. And let's see what else. Frostmoth, which is cool. And now we get the dens with legendaries. All your box legendaries are coming back in max raid battles, which we already knew they were coming back and we could have assumed new Regis. Let's go. I'm so hyped about the new Regis and the new Galarian birds. Oh man, they've got me hyped too. And of course we see Calyrex looking all fantastic here. And I, okay, Gigantamax forms here. And some more Kubfu and Urshifu and, okay, and this we'll talk about as well here in just a second. This is pretty cool. We get some new moves shown off here that we don't even know existed. That move, this move, and this move looks different. And yeah, so that's our trailer. So now a lot a lot of things in the trailer that are shown, a lot of times they get shown on the website and they don't get explained super well in the trailer and the website goes on to explain them. That is the same thing for here. So let's go ahead and jump on over to the website and we'll see if we can't learn some more. But before we jump into the main website, I wanted to go ahead and talk about something on Cerebi. Now, Cerebi is an amazing website that I've talked about multiple times on the channel before, and a link to this page will be down in the description below, along with everything else that you're seeing in this video. So this talks about some new things that have been found in the game. One, we get an, we get an explanation of Max Soup, which I haven't actually read over the Max Soup description yet, but it basically just is what I said it, I thought it was gonna be. If you give it to a Pokemon with the potential, it will be able to Gigantamax, which is awesome. That means we can now breed Gigantamax Pokemon. That is fantastic, I love it. It's what makes the starter Pokemon Gigantamax, that's cool. Cramomatic, although it is the creepiest thing in the world, I think it's gonna be useful because you can put in more than one item into it and it creates a new item, which is awesome. I think it'll be a great way to get some rare items that allow you to do some interesting things. Next is Move Tutors. Now, the thing about Move Tutors is we all thought about Move Tutors, but you have to consider this generation was very different because TMs and TRs are so abundantly available and they cover almost all of your moves that normally would be move tutor moves. So where would they even go with it? Well, they went and created some new moves and we're gonna go ahead and talk about a few of those, the ones that have been officially announced on the main website. So we'll talk about those in just a second. So next, the dojo does restricted sparring, meaning that specific battles restrict the Pokemon that you can use and various new conditions. Basically, it's just so that you can't run in with an all level 100 team and just run through the DLC. You've got to run with Kubfu and then just kind of figure it out from there, which I think is a great thing for DLC because otherwise it's just going to be way too easy. You're just going to bring a level 100 team and just run through the everything. That's not fun. So. Next, Isle of Armor, there are 10 different areas with various looks. That's good, that's a lot of variety. And you can see the two towers down there in that little map. And so Tower of Darkness, Tower of Water, you gain access to it after training with Kubfu. And whichever tower you go to determines which Urshifu you're gonna get. Which is cool because normally evolutions or anything like this are tied to the version, but now it's tied to the tower. And so you can go to either one and you can get either form within your game. And then of course, if you have friends, you can trade them over and that sort of thing. Now I'm wondering, there's a lot of islands around and there's specifically this funky shaped island right here. I feel like this island right here is gonna be kind of important. I'm not sure how we're gonna reach it, but it seems important to me. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Also, I don't know if these dots mean anything because they they seem kind of out of place i don't know but it looks like places that you'll be able to possibly like surf or uh, i don't like take your bike i don't know but that's just just a theory because it covers these little minor uh waterways here that could also be just like transit and that sort of thing i don't know we'll have to see but yeah so new new pokemon are of course kubfu 
and new Gigantamax Pokemon. We have already talked about this. And returning Pokemon, we get Golduck. Golduck isn't super fantastic. I mean, it was a big part of Double Duck for a while in VGC, but ultimately competitively not gonna do too much. Polyrath is getting some big buffs in its move set now, which is gonna be nice. So I think this Mon will finally be useful. Slowbro. Oh, we'll talk about him later. Galarian Slowbro is going to be awesome. We get Magnezone. That's cool. So the thing about Magnezone now is there's no hidden power fire. So it doesn't deal with Ferrothorn like what it used to. It doesn't deal with Skarmory like what it used to, which Skarmory was announced in, I believe, a Japanese tweet. There was a Japanese video, I believe, that came out that announced Skarmory. It didn't really mean to, but Skarmory was in it. And so we know that that's coming back as well. So that's kind of unfortunate, so I don't think it's going to be as useful as it used to be, but I think it'll still have a place. Um, Eggy, we already talked about a little bit. Chansey, oh god. Chansey's just so bulky on the special side, and it is so annoying, especially with Skarmory coming back with it. We're going to start seeing Skarm Bliss all over again, and it's going to drive me crazy. Whatever. Tangle and Tangrowth, I love it. That's great. Kangaskhan, not that strong without its Mega. Kingdra, I'm super excited about Kingdra. Starmie, we already talked about. Scizor, yes. Tauros, eh, it's okay. Uh, Azumarill, this is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. I'm so glad it's coming back. I think it's it's gonna be super strong. Uh, Politoed Scizor, we already talked about. Skarmory right there. Kingdra, Blissey, uh, Exploud, really cool Mon. Not super great, but it's cool. Luxray, oh, I love Luxray. It's just such a good, it, it's not ridiculously strong, but I mean, guts boosted. I mean, this thing can do some damage. It's pretty great. Crocodile, oh, such a good boy. Zoroark. Zoroark isn't fantastic, but it's gonna be super fast in this metagame. It's gonna be faster than it used to be, comparatively speaking, at least for a while. So I'm excited to see what kind of shenanigans we can pull off with it. That's cool, Emolga, don't care. Mineshow. Pretty good UU threat, pretty solid UU threat. Dredagon, eh. Buffalant, it's okay. Volcarona with heavy duty boots. That's gonna be busted, just like Talonflame. These are both going to be insane. So Swords Dance Talonflame with the heavy duty boots and uh, Quiver Dance Volcarona with heavy duty boots. Both gonna be incredibly strong. Dragalge, very interesting Mon. I love Dragalge though, I, I think it's a great design. It's just, it's one of those mons that's just barely not strong enough. It's pretty bulky, but it just doesn't hit very hard. Dedenne, don't care. Lycanroc, I think Lycanroc has potential this generation, but at least last generation, it wasn't very good, even with its Z moves. And then some of our new, uh, some of our new moves that have been officially announced. These are ones that have been officially announced. There were some that were discovered via some leaks, but we're not gonna be talking about those today. We're just gonna be talking about the ones that were officially announced. So Jungle Healing, this is specifically for Zarud, and it heals the Pokemon and its allies, which is pretty cool. Um, Wicked Blow and Surging Strikes are both for Urshifu, and it always crits. The Wicked Blow is a single strike move, and then the Surging Strike is a three hit move. All three hits, critical hit, which is pretty cool. Burning Jealousy. It creates a pool that damages all opposing Pokemon. Pretty interesting. Um, and that's what we saw the Magmar using. So we've got Grassy Glide, which is cool. It gives priority if Grassy Terrain is up. So Rillaboom right here. Rillaboom is going to be insane if it has this. That's going to give it some priority, which is cool. And then Shell Sidearm. This is for our boy <sighs> Slowbro. It's just so cool. And then this move is going to be dumb like this move may poison the opponent and inflicts damage based on whether physical or special would do more so it's not like photon geyser at least it's not worded that way so what it's going to do is you're going to use your special attack stat and fire this shot of whatever and then it's going to look at okay which is higher or which is lower rather their defense or their special defense and it's going to attack whichever one is lower. That's so good, and I, I love it. So now that is one thing that you have to consider about Dynamaxing this Pokemon, at least in like VGC, is that you would lose that effect if you Dynamaxed it and went for the Maxus. 
I mean, you're still going to get a special attack raise, which is, you know, there's a trade-off there, but you don't get that specialized hitting of the physical of the physical defense. So, you know, a Blissey normally would come in on the special attacking one. But now a Blissey can't switch in on this because then you're going to hit it on the physical side. So that makes it pretty cool. It makes it pretty potent. So I'm pretty excited about that. And so speaking of which, let's go ahead and lastly jump into the Pokemon website where there is so much more information and we're going to break all of that down for you. All right, and last of all, we're gonna talk about what's on the website. Now there is a ton to go over here, so I'm sure you're looking down and seeing that the video's still got a little bit to go. Yeah, th there's so much to look at here on this website. It's super fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and start with our newly discovered Pokemon and we'll just go down the list. So Urshifu, right? We got some new information on it. We get its ability, Unseen Fist. This thing is 6'3", my God, this thing's tall and we get its new signature move. We have Wicked Blow for the single strike and we have Surging Strikes for the, whatever you call them, the Rapid Style. There we go, Rapid Strike. Now, single strike, both of these moves are actually going to crit every time, which is pretty cool. Now, at the same time, we can't have the power being too crazy. I think the highest move right now that is a guaranteed crit is 60, so I don't see this going over like base like 80, and and even that's kind of strong because I mean this thing's gonna have a high attack stat I would assume, so 80 is kind of strong. Surging strikes is a three hit combo that always crits. That's kind of busted. Now, and I think that that's what's gonna make this thing strong. I, I do think that the typing of dark fighting is going to be a little bit stronger than water fighting, but that move being a three hit combo of always critting, that could redeem, that could redeem it. I don't know. Now, what's even crazier is Unseen Fist. What does its ability do? It ignores protect. Now in singles, that's not really that crazy because protect isn't really used all that much outside of like wish users but besides that you don't really use protect all that much however in doubles it is so and we're gonna go ahead and look at gmax urshifu as well because this thing can hit through max guard max rapid flow and gmax one blow can deal damage even if a target defends itself using moves like Max Guard or Protect. That's ridiculous. That's gonna make this thing such a threat in VGC and I can't wait to do it. So, I mean, your opponent has to, has to Max Guard in order to get to the next turn and you are denying them that option. That is incredibly oppressive in VGC. So if this thing ends up being legal in VGC, which I hope that it does, this thing is going to be strong because you are going to force your opponent into a lot of situations that he or she does not want to be in. So going to be very strong in the metagame. All right, next, I want to talk about Galarian Slowbro. <sighs> I love this thing. I, I think this is going to be absolutely amazing. And I've, I'm, I've already planned that this is going to be our first Wi-Fi battle of of this being of this being out which speaking of which i'm gonna go ahead and take now to go ahead and promote our live stream so we normally live stream on sunday nights at 6 p.m eastern time and however we're going to have an extra stream on release day so this releases on the 17th which is a wednesday and we will be streaming at two o'clock p.m eastern time it's the time that my videos would normally be going live we normally would be getting a wi-fi battle at that time but i thought it would be nice to do a live stream instead so come on by when normally you would be watching the video and you will be able to catch me live playing through the dlc so I'm very excited about that, and I get that it's in the afternoon, It's, but it's. I thought that it would work out since it is the same time that my videos always go up anyway, so it just, it just works out. So this mon is definitely going on our first Wi-Fi battle team that's coming after the, after the release, and I've got a few theories about this, right? First of all, I think this thing's going to be fast, and s the reason I think it's going to be fast, one, the shell is nowhere near as oppressive as it is on the other two designs. Slowbro, the regular Slowbro, it's like taking up the entire tail. 
and it's huge and it's heavy. So he's slow, right? The other one is on his head. And so it's weighing him down. He can't really move. This one is just a weapon on his arm. That's all it is. It's just a weapon. And so I think this thing's gonna be fast, which we already saw the slow poke running incredibly fast on that beach. And so that seems to suggest that this thing is gonna be somewhat fast. I'm not gonna say that it's gonna be like Zera Aura levels fast, but I think it's gonna be pretty quick. Now, with a speed that puts even the quickest reflexes to shame, it puts, it readies its shelter and points and makes poisonous liquid shoot from the shelter's tip. This also seems to kind of indicate that maybe it's not super fast, but maybe its ability, which is quick draw, might have something to do with it. And we'll talk about that. So we've got Shell Sidearm, which is the, the signature move, though, that we will talk about first. We fire a poisonous liquid from the tip, and of course, it does physical or special damage depending on which will damage the target more. We talked about that already. But Quick Draw. Quick Draw, I think, is going to be what makes this Pokemon somewhat good, right? So, you remember the ability Mega Launcher, right? It was on, what was it, Cloyitzer and Mega Blastoise? That ability boosted the moves that were like bomb and projectile moves and that sort of thing, right? I think that Quick Draw is going to take those moves and instead of boosting the power, or maybe it will, but instead of boosting the power, it's going to give them priority. So things like Sludge Bomb, things like the signature move here, um, Water Pulse, which counted. So Pulse and Bomb type moves, anything like that, I think are going to end up being given priority, give like a plus one priority, which could make this thing kind of a threat right? Because this thing could end up being a fantastic revenge killer. And so I'm excited about, about the potential with Quick Draw. If that's what it ends up being, this thing's going to be a heck of a revenge killer. And I, I'm excited, right? So as far as move sets go, I'm thinking probably the signature move or sludge bomb, depending on how strong this is. Because, I mean, you think about it, right? You'd want to run this on things like Blissey. So if Blissey becomes super prominent, you're going to want to run that. Otherwise, it's probably not going to be as strong as Sludge Bomb. And so you would want to run Sludge Bomb, but, you know, whatever. And then you're going to want to run a Psychic move, either Psychic or Psy Shock. And then you're going to want to run maybe a Water-type move. So you might want to run Surf. But if this thing gives priority to stuff, you may want to consider Water Pulse. Because then that would end up being counted. You have a priority chance to confuse your opponent. That's kind of strong. So... I don't know, we'll just have to see. So maybe three attacks with Life Orb and Slack Off. That's my that's my preliminary thoughts on that. So who knows, we'll see if that's any good or not. And let's move on to the next one. All right, the next one we're gonna talk about is Gigantamax, Venusaur, and Blastoise. There's not really a ton to talk about here minus their new moves. First of all, I'm not really a huge fan of the design here. And I wasn't really a fan of Mega Venusaur either. That's just me. But, uh, I don't know, I'm just not really a fan of this. I, I feel like it's hard to really make the Venusaur different and good at the same time because I love original Venusaur, but I haven't liked any of their variations. I don't know, it's just me. But G-Max Vine Lash is going to basically be the same as G-Max Wildfire. So if you are not a grass type, you t are gonna take one sixth damage every turn, just like with Volcalith and with the Wildfire. And Blastoise is gonna be the same thing. Now I love this design. This is cool. Now it is stealing from Turtonator, you know, the whole like turning around backwards and like giving the side eye to your opponent, but I don't care. I, it, I'm okay with it. I'm totally, I'm totally fine. But yeah, all these cannons and stuff, that's super epic. It's its fantastic. Um, and it's gonna do the exact same thing. So it's going to do a sixth of damage every turn to anything that isn't a water type. So that's pretty cool. Interesting design. I love this design. Don't really like Venusaur's design. Now let's go ahead and talk about what's most hype about this, the birds and the Reggies. All right, so let's start with the Reggies here. So we've got Reggie Ilecki. <sighs> Why, why can't it just be called Reggie Lecky? Why do we need this E? The answer is we don't. It could have just been Reggie Lecky, and that would have been great. But now it's Reggie Lecky, and that's just... Uh, I don't like it. It's clunky. Anyway, we have the Electron Pokemon. It's 311, so it's pretty small, I would say. And it has the ability Transistor. Now, we don't know what this ability does just yet, but my... 
my, my thinking is it's gonna basically just be a boost to electric type moves. And so it's basically gonna be just like a magnet boost built in all the time. That's my guess, but we'll just have to see. Because I mean, it says, it's electric type moves are said to pack the greatest power used by any electric type Pokemon. That's a pretty bold statement. And so I, I feel like that's what Transistor has to do. It has to boost those electric type moves. Then it also has Thunder Cage. Thunder Cage is a trapping move that allows you to keep your opponent in and it also does damage. So it's kind of like the Fire Spin, Magma Storm. I'm assuming it's gonna be more like Magma Storm and have a really high base power and a low accuracy and then it does damage every turn so uh, i think it's going to be a lot like magma storm so that that's that's something to think about i i think it's going to be cool i think it's going to be a cool move i think it's going to be cool pokemon i think it's going to be strong i think it's not going to be super bulky but it's going to hit hard and so that and i'm i'm okay with that now reggie drago reggie reggie drago drago whatever you want to say it, you know, I, I feel like the name could have been a little bit better as well. It, it's okay, I guess, but whatever. Dragon's Maw is probably going to be exactly the same thing, except with Dragon-type moves, and it's going to be boosting those by however much, maybe 20-30%. Now, the sealed Regidrago, so this is the head of a body that Regigigas was trying to build. I don't know if this screams Gigantamax to you, but it does to me. And the same thing with the Reggie Alecki, right? The little blue things on the Reggie Alecki are supposedly what are like harnessing its power. When this thing Gigantamaxes, Reggie Alecki can just blow those off and just go nuts, right? Reggie Drago, what if it gets the entire body, like the rest of the body, when it gets to Gigantamax? That could be crazy. So there's my, there's my theory there. Or we could have a Gigantamax Regigigas that takes on the head anyway, takes on parts of all of the Regis. That's a possibility as well. Who knows? And then Dragon Energy, very unoriginal name, but it's basically gonna be Dragon type Water Spout. So I'm assuming it's gonna work the exact same way. It's gonna be the base like 150, I believe it is, at full health. And then it's just gonna drop down as you go. So that's gonna be pretty cool. That's gonna be a strong move. Um, depending on how fast this thing is, which it doesn't look super fast. Um, so it may be a trick room type sweeper, just depending. I mean, it, this thing's 611. This thing's way bigger than what it looks. I mean, this thing looks like it's three feet tall, but it's 611. This thing's huge. Okay. I, I didn't realize that. This thing's massive and it's 440 pounds. This thing is not fast. It's not going to be fast at all. And so this is going to be a trick room sweeper, I think. And... We'll just have to see. It, it could be cool. Also from the animation, it looks a lot like the Core Enforcer animation from Zygarde. And so it might hit both opponents similar to Eruption or Water Spout. So I, I'm assuming that it's going to, that it's gonna hit both opponents. So that could be really interesting as well. So we could see some Trick Room meta with this mod, which I, um, I'm down for. I would love to see that. So lastly, let's look at the birds. All right, first up is gonna be Galarian Articuno. And I got it wrong. I got the typings wrong. I thought that the birds would maintain their ice, electric, and fire typing. But instead, they maintained their flying typing, which, I mean, is, is fine, I guess, but it, it's weird, right? It, it's, it's odd. To me, it's weird because I, I thought that you could just justify them being off the ground. They don't have to be flying types to be off the ground. But I mean, I guess it is what it is. Anyway, this is now a psychic flying type. I predicted this to be ghost, so I got that wrong too, but it's psychic, which is totally fine. I, I feel like it's close. It was within the family. And so, yeah, it is 5'7", 112 pounds. So this thing's gonna be speedy, I would say. Um, and the original one's decently speedy as well, but as competitive. Competitive is such a good ability on this Pokemon. So in doubles where you see Intimidate a lot, when you get Intimidated, you're going to be getting a plus two boost to your special attack. That's gonna be pretty nice. Now I wanna talk a little bit about this signature move because this signature move kinda scares me a little bit. 
So there is no freeze clause, right, in competitive Pokemon because the most chance that you have to freeze anything is a 10% chance. Now freeze is the strongest, I would say, is the strongest status in the game, but it's also the hardest to get. The reason it's so strong is because, so you take like sleep, for example, right? Something that you can get out of or confusion, right? You get a slightly higher chance to get out of it as you go. So a as you take more turns of sleeping or confusion or whatever, you are more likely to get out. Freeze is a flat chance. It does not increase as you go. So you can be frozen indefinitely. And that's a thing that can happen. So freezing glare, if this ends up acting like scald and ends up having a 30% chance to freeze, we may have a problem because this thing could run scarf because now it's not four times weak to rocks anymore. It's only two times. So it takes a quarter now rather than half. And so you could run boots, but you could run scarf and just freeze everything. That's kind of dumb. So we'll just have to see if it ends up being still a 10% chance or 20% chance, you know, whatever. But if this ends up being a 30% chance, like what I'm assuming it's going to be, we're going to have issues and this thing's going to, this is going to be a problem. So I'm just, I ain't saying, but I'm just saying this is going to be a problem if it ends up having a 30% chance to freeze. Next is going to be Zapdos. Now Zapdos has Defiant, which is another great ability. Uh, I, I'm so glad that these guys are getting the love that they deserve. And, and not that original Zapdos is bad by any means. Original Zapdos is fantastic in VGC. It's great in, in singles. Very good mod. But now we've got an offensive variant, it seems, in Fighting Flying, same as Halucha. This could be very strong. I, I'm thinking this is going to be strong because it looks fast as heck. I mean, it, it looks really, really fast. I mean, it's a roadrunner for crying, for crying out loud. And it has thunderous kick, which lowers the target's defense stat every, every time you use it. This is a physical attacker that is lowering your defense stat. That's super strong. That's super busted. It's gonna be really strong. So yeah, this is gonna be a strong one for sure. I mean, there, there's not gonna be a switch in, right? You switch something in and now your defense is lowered and now it's doing more damage. That's su that's ridiculous. It's gonna be, this is gonna be a really strong one. And then Moltres. Moltres has Berserk. Berserk is a really cool ability. It is unique to Drampa. And what it does is when you get below half health, you gain a stage of special attack. Here's the thing, you can roost, and then when you go back below again, you get another stage. And this thing is definitely going to have roost being dark flying, which is a really cool typing, by the way. And so, yeah, it's gonna be cool. But so it also has fiery wrath, and it has a chance to flinch. So it's basically going to be just a signature dark pulse. It's gonna be the same thing. I'm interested to see if it's going to be the same amount chance to flinch as Dark Pulse, which I think Dark Pulse is either 20 or 30% chance. So I'm wondering if it's gonna be the same the same way, I, I don't know. But I think that this is going to be the least strong out of them, but who knows, I could be wrong, but I see this being the least strong of the three. I see Articuno being number two, depending on the freeze chance. If it's 30%, we could see it being the strongest, but I think Galarian Zapdos is gonna be the strongest out of all of them. That's just me. So let's look at a couple more things and we'll wrap it up. Okay, so clothing, right? Clothing is gonna be something we're gonna have a lot more options for. And so we've got Chairman Rose here. We've got Leon's hat. We've got this awesome Ice Q shirt, which I think is adorable. And then of course the Marnie outfit here. We've got new Pokedexes, which is cool. So new Dexes for each of the DLCs. We've got new Max Raid battles. Okay, that checks out obviously. And then we don't care about the cards new features added in Isle of Armor. Now, we have heard that we are gonna be getting the apricot balls here, and I think this is where the Kramomatic is going to be 
is going to really come into play is you're going to put in like apricots and that sort of thing and be able to get special pokeballs which is going to be really cool so i think there might end up being some other stuff that you can get with it but i really think that it's going to be mostly uh apricot balls and that sort of thing um new tutor moves so these are some of the animations or at least part of the animations here and so we've got burning jealousy which hits both targets and it burns opposing pokemon that have their stats boosted that have had their stats boosted during the turn now i don't see that that becoming like the biggest reason why it's there um i, I love the name though burning jealousy you know you're jealous of the stat boosts but like, I think this could be interesting in, in doubles, right? Having a fire type spread move that is not, uh, it's not eruption, right? So it's, it's not as limiting that way. And it's not lava plume, so you're not hitting your friends. So this could be interesting, right? And so if you've got like a Dragapult that's going for Dragon Dance in front of you, you burn it, that's great. If you've got a Mimikyu, and both of these like right here are both great targets to show, because you've got Swords Dance. So if those are going for setup moves, they're getting burned and that's fantastic. So that's gonna really help to punish those setting up on the physical side. Grassy Glide is of course going to be, and so right here we are shown that the Rillaboom is going to have it and that is going to be priority in Grassy Terrain. So that's gonna be cool. This thing is gonna be a revenge killer and it's not gonna need a scarf for it. That's really good. Max Soup it will become a special Pokemon capable of Gigantamaxing. So, yeah. So now a regular, a regular one can now Gigantamax. That's so good. I love it. Restricted sparring. All right. Well, we've already talked about that. Crown Tundra. Now you see that we are going to be able to actually go into these dens. And so you're going to have to fight different things on the way, depending on which path you take, which is kind of cool. So it's a new way to do co-op. And I think it's going to really be able to bring a lot of these people together. So that's cool. And then, of course, we've got Giratina. Now we've got the Galarian Star Tournament. This is going to be pretty interesting. It's just going to be like an in-game kind of event, I think. And so what you'll be able to do is actually take on double battles with you bring a helper and you face like two gym leaders at once. That's cool. That's a great idea. I, I think that's absolutely fantastic. And it's going to add a new... A new level to it it's not necessarily that it's going to be hard per se but it just adds a new level and i think that's really just an interesting thing it's not that hard to add into the game but i think that's really really awesome and so now we get a little table here which is what i wanted to show as the last thing i think that this little table kind of shows off uh a, a lot of really cool stuff so new areas duh kubfu urshfu duh gigantamax okay New regional forms. This means we're getting new forms, more new Galarian forms in Isle of Armor. We've not been shown any yet for Isle of Armor. So, or not Isle of Armor, Crown Tundra rather. So yeah, Pokemon that didn't appear, duh. New dexes, new clothing, and new Pokemon and Max Raid battles. Now these last four are what I think is interesting. We're getting new items here, but not here. We're getting new tutor moves here, but not here, which, okay, whatever. Restricted sparring battle feature, I mean, that's specific to Cub Fu, but that also suggests that there's not going to be as many limitations when we get to the Crown Tundra as far as what you can bring there. And so are they gonna just allow level 100s to just kind of roam free? I don't know, but that's what it kind of seems to suggest. So we'll just have to see about that. I'm not really sure yet. And then new co-op play mode right there. So. One more thing I wanted to talk about here before we go is going to be this guy right here. New faces, okay, whatever. Mustard, we've seen him a bunch of times. He's going to be the main guy in Isle of Armor. And then of course, Avery and Clara are new rivals. We've talked about them before, we've seen them. However, it's Peony, I guess that's how you pronounce his name, that kind of interests me, right? So. First of all, tell me he doesn't look like Chairman Rose. He looks a lot like Chairman Rose. And so I, I think he's going to have a, a big part to play as far as like, he has to be related to him. He's either his brother or his cousin or something. He's, he's related to him in some way. Also, isn't a peony a flower too? I'm pretty sure a peony is a flower. And so 
Yeah, that that's that kind of seems that kind of seems uh, his bold behavior draws plenty of attention. Yeah, yeah, listening isn't his strongest suit. Yeah, this this all just screams Rose, and so I really think that it's gonna be pretty interesting. Plenty of affection for his daughter. What if his daughter is Olina? What if his daughter is is her, and she ends up coming back to be annoying? I don't know. We'll just have to see. Also, the last thing, on his hat, there's a little dinosaur. Does this mean Galarian Amora or Galarian Aurorus? Because we know we're getting those back at that time. Are we getting Galarian versions? I don't know, but that's my final prediction. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video of all kinds of stuff, right? So, tier shifts, we've got Dracovish ban, we've got a, tailor, a trailer breakdown, and then of course we've got some predictions and stuff even for Crown Tundra. So I am super excited about what is to come in Pokemon in the new DLC that drops in a couple of weeks, and I hope you guys are too. Let me know down in the comments below what you are most excited about in the DLC, what you think about my predictions or theories. I would love to have those discussions with you in the comments down below. So make sure to like the video and make sure to subscribe if you're new. Today's the last day to get that subscription in to make sure it counts for that hundred. So we'll see what happens. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.